Hey, how you doing? I'm Elder Joy. Look, uh, I am uh, associate pastor of Chris Center here in Flint, Michigan, 301 Van Wagner Avenue, uh, 48505. Look, I've been, how do you say, thinking about this one particular uh, subject a long time. And uh, back in 1998, possibly 99, um, there was a production um, that uh, I had an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to get involved in. It was WJOB FM Radio in Detroit, Michigan. And it was a morning uh, show, and it was called The Breakfast. Uh, breakfast jam and um, the breakfast jam had uh, various questions you know um, uh, and the public uh, listener uh, listeners would be able to call in and give their opinion right so um, I listened faithfully and I called in regularly and uh, I want to share this with you. I want you to listen to it, but I want you to also share your opinion on the subject. And uh, I'll just start it, and we'll take it from there. A man, a woman, or a man. better pastor, a man or a woman? Man. Good morning, how are you doing? We are fine, how are you this morning? Good, I was going to comment on your great debate. <laughs> Who makes a better pastor, man or woman? No. What is uh, going on in here? Hold on one second. What is going on? It doesn't make a difference from um, the gender of the person. It's the height of the person that makes the difference. And then it, it makes a uh, big difference whether or not the person has the interest of uh, the church or the community in, in mind or if it's just a profession. If it's just a profession, then neither the male nor the female will do. But if it's a genuine concern about the people of God and uh, them having a vision from God and being led by God, that vision, then that is the right person to lead that congregation. Now, that, you know, that sounds really nice, my man, but reality. Let's because get to reality. That is reality. We've got so many bad apples. No, that's that the is. wish. That's the wish. No, 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 it's not. Reality right. is uh, men sometimes do not want women to lead them. But see, that's the problem. They, you, you had to... Well, then the problem them. is reality, right? The reality of it is that many of us have had women over us in our... In our early childhood so long that we kind of resent it when we become men but we, we're finding we're finding out that so many men are using how do you say god's um how do you say god's business as their own business and that's not good that's not always good because see it'll come across in the way you respond to certain people because you'll start picking and choosing and people will notice those things hey, amen so you have to be very careful you have to be conscientious you got to know that this is not your that's not your profession that is something that you are doing for god for the people and then in turn he will bless you you don't bless yourself and then curse people well. you know that. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Tell it, my you, brother. You are so honest. You but are see, just honest. Because, well, I grew up in the church, and and I know about the church. And you're just I, I, that mess, aren't you? I'm sick of people, how do you say, tripping on people who have flaws, and they have flaws, but because you are in a position, you use your flaws to your advantage, and then you, you hurt so many people. There are too many people who have been in the church who will not go in anybody's church because of people who have been in leadership in the church, and it's time out for that. That's too clickish. That sounds like a cult. It doesn't well, it sound... happens like that in all churches, yeah, man, yeah. and it doesn't make a difference what the religion is. Well, but, you know, I, I'm not any particular de denomination. I, I think that God is consciousness, so I, you know, occasionally I'll go to church 
to visit a friend's church. And uh, the things I see, the reason why I'm not in the denomination is, the denomination is because man creates what he wants to create for control. And he interprets the way he wants to interpret. And then we'll get mad at you if you challenge his particular philosophy. But the thing is, you we not look. I'm trying to, you know, the thing is, people look at these theologies and they're going into these theologies. Then they're mixing biases based on their particular, uh, how do you say, concept of philosophy of living. All right, just take the word of God, apply it to people's life, and look at the real issues. That's what the Breakfast Jam is doing with this this great debate. You're, you're making people, uh, how do you say, challenge some of their old thoughts. And see, sometimes that's the best thing to do because you, you awaken people. You make them more conscious of what's going on and who they are and how they fit in. And as long as, you know, people can be happy and involved in their church and have respect for their leader in that church, that's what makes a good pastor. Mildred Gaddis, what do you think about that, brother? I like him. You like him? I like Very him. Very articulately spoken. Uh, yeah, I'm blowing that, right? <laughs> Very articulately <laughs> spoken. <laughs> Who makes a better pastor this morning, a woman or a man? That's a great debate. And there you have it. And I found that very interesting, you all. Um, yes, they gave me quite a bit of time. I was uh, really, really, uh, let's say, impressed that uh, they would even find my uh, opinion uh, valuable. And, uh, and I respect that, and I thank them for that. I never got a chance to uh, thank them personally, but I did get a chance to work in uh, a radio station with uh, Mildred Gaddis. I didn't work with her, but I had a show on WCHB, 1420 AM uh, gospel station in Detroit uh, for a while, back in 2004 or something, and something around in there. But anyway, my take on that is, I've always referred to Joel 2 and 28, and I'm um, reading from the King James Version. And it shall come to pass that afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. That has always resounded within me. and. It has come to fruition um, or it's manifested in so many ways in my life because there have been many, many women who have um, embraced me in ministry, who have supported me in ministry, who have encouraged me in ministry. And to this day, um, Mother Charlotte Miller, who is an evangelist, and now pastor who has been evangelizing for more than 60 years. And the history that we have, going back to when I was 17 years old, I can't not stress it enough, the hand of God is always on us. And if you believe in the word of God, and you believe uh, the things that he says to you in prayer and through prayer, and, and sometimes you're not praying and it gives you revelation. And that's all about seeking him and having a personal relationship. I can't explain it to you unless you believe in it and you practice it. The best practices are those uh, practices that you, the principles that you hold dear and you believe and you, you work toward their manifestation. But the word of God will manifest itself just by us believing and doing what we have to do. Now, in Joel 28, he was talking to the priests, not so much the people, but everyone heard it, everyone. Joel declared the prophet, the minor prophet. He says, it's, you know, God is telling them it's gonna come to pass that women and men, sons and daughters, male and female, that's what I equated to, just simple, I'm not going into the depths of it, but taking the word for its face value. Prophesy, what is prophesying? That's proclaiming, that's stating something good and something bad. But at the same time, prophecy is something that is foretelling what is to come. And Joel said, that your old men shall dream dreams. 
we as people all over have come to understand that there was a man who dreamed dreams and his name was Marvin. He made I Have a Dream very relevant. And then he says, your young men shall see visions. You see yourself past what we've been through. What we're going through now, that's nothing. This too shall pass. But as, a, as relevant as this word is, some people still have a problem with women ministers and women in ministry and women in leadership in the church and women bishops. Why? Why? Why cherry pick? Because in my mind, I believe people cherry pick because of their own agenda, their own egos. Get off your ego. God can use anybody he wants. If he can make a donkey to speak and say, mm, I cannot, I cannot curse this person because God didn't say that. So look, I cannot say what God is going to do with a female. He has raised up women into ministerial positions and they are awesome. And I ask, why can't we follow a woman who is fully committed to the ways and the principles of our mighty God? What's your take on that? That's all. That's your take. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to go live on it, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw it on Facebook and uh, out there in social media. And I'd like to hear what your perspective is. And again, I'm Elder Joel Rush. I am an associate pastor at Prayer Center that is in Flint, Michigan. And the address is 301 Van Wagner. Flint, Michigan, Corey 505, where our pastor is, the honorable, I call it honorable, and the, the woman of God who is full of wisdom and full of the Holy Ghost. And I do say the Holy Ghost. She's old school, y'all. And I'm loving every bit of it. And I'm enjoying a daily prayer. And I invite you to our daily prayer. Not, and that's a concept that uh, God has also, also uh, dealt with me on. I was like, Mother, how can we, how can you do this every day? She said, well, that's the, well, that's what God told me to do. And I need you to do what you do. You stay in your lane. And I said, well, you don't laugh and every time you call me pastor. So she says, Pastor Joel, and I just, I'm still tickled, but the bottom line is, why do we have a problem? Or why do some such people even women, some women, I want to hear your perspective too. Why do we have a time with women ministers? The mother is somebody who has wisdom and she has that Holy Ghost fire in her. And I say the passion is just, uh, it's infectious. Her passion is very infectious and her prayer life is very real. So. Again, prayer, daily prayer service, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And as a caveat, many times, Mother might uh, take you into Proverbs. She loves Proverbs. Wisdom. In anything, everything you do, you get an understanding. But at the same time, you need wisdom to dis discern certain things in your life. And uh, in order to be a blessing to others. And my prayer is, Lord, just make me a blessing to someone, someone in this life. Let me be a blessing. Okay, with that, does it make a difference whether, whether a woman or a man is a pastor? And if so, why? Why not? 